these final days, wickedness is growing strong. Even though wickedness of Satan is manifest in the hearts of mankind, Christians are called to stand upon God's word in spite of what's going on in the world. Many Christians confuse caring for sinners with accepting and condoning sin. There's a supernatural battle raging in this world, and it's time for Christians to stop talking on the side of the enemy. Many who claim to be Christians are cowardly lions who skulk in the background trying not to cause trouble. Are you so afraid of being accused of being judgmental that you forget to discern what is and isn't sin? Scripture defines what is right and wrong, and that's our guide. Our cowardness gives Satan the advantage. Schools teach the lie of evolution, and cowardly Christians keep silent. Schools teach sex education to kindergartners, and cowardly lions again keep silent. Schools teach gender choice, and cowardly lions keep silent. Libraries have transgender story time, and cowardly lions keep silent. The government finances the murder of babies, and cowardly lions keep silent. These things and more are all influenced by Satan, and courageous Christians need to take a stand against them. If you do not stand for God, you stand for Satan. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warf warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God and the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing unto the captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 our cowardly ways need to be replaced with courage through the power of the Holy Spirit. Where are the courageous Christians who aren't daunted by the liberals who promote the lust of the flesh? Because Christians have become cowardly lions. We've allowed every form of evil to be accepted as normal. We've allowed evil to be called good for too long. Christians have been known as the silent majority because we're afraid to speak up for Christian values. We deny Christ rather than endanger friendships or upset those who embrace sin. Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah, so why are his followers so cowardly? Jesus didn't hesitate when he laid down his life for our redemption, but most Christians refuse to sacrifice carnal lust and live for him. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and cannot be conformed to this world, but ye transfer by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Romans 12, 1-3 Brothers and sisters, are you afraid to speak up? Do you accept the ways of the world and keep silent about God's truth? I'm not talking about standing on a street corner with a sign that says, Repent, for the end is in sight, or angrily confronting those who embrace sin. I'm talking about holding schools accountable for teaching evil. I'm talking about not voting for candidates who support sin. I'm also talking about having an answer for the hope within you. Jesus publicly came against many things, such as corruption among the religious leaders and he publicly healed people. But when a Pharisee named Nicodemus came to him privately to ask questions, Jesus had answers. Jesus told him he had to be born again. As Christians, we need to be able to explain that fact to someone who asks us questions. But if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and be ready always to give the, an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that's in you, with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. 1 Peter 3, 14 through 15. The word conversation means much more than how you talk. It comes from the Greek word anostrophe, which means the way you conduct your life. If you are unequally yoked in relationships and live with one foot in the world, you'll never be the courageous Christian God would have you be. If you live your life so nobody sees Christ living in you, then you are one of the cowardly lions. Satan is a lot of show. He's a loud mouth, and you can hear his whining voice every time a liberal speaks against Christian morality and promotes sin. Unless a Christian studies scripture, is certain of God's truth, and lives by God's standards, fear can overpower us and keep us silent. We need to compare our words and actions to scripture and not allow Satan to gain a toehold into our lives. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. 1 Peter 5-8 through Satan roars and makes big noise because he wants to destroy Christians. Christians forget that he was defeated at the cross by Jesus Christ. Courageous Christians will stand against the wiles of the devil. 
uh, write God's word on your heart and live your life as a testimony. Satan and his minions will do all they can to destroy your faith. But if you're alert to his wiles, you, you won't fall into his attacks. And the question is, is how do we go from being cowardly lions to being the courageous Christians we need to be? Uh, first is to recognize the fight that we face is spiritual. A spiritual warfare needs spiritual weapons. And there's no excuse for any Christian to lose courage in the face of the enemy. Uh, God has given us the weapons we need. Uh, when you accept Christ, you accept his will for your life. Lay aside the sin you've repent of and follow him. Sin will always weaken you. Jesus Christ gave his life in order to redeem this fallen world. Every person sins, but Christians know that sin leads to eternal death and have asked to be forgiven. That forgiveness isn't a license to continue embracing sin. Be courageous and stand against sin. Our way of life needs to glorify God, not Satan. Once we recognize that, the battle is supernatural. We need to be armed with the weapons of the spiritual war. God gave us the weapons we need. The Holy Spirit is in us, so that is our first defense. Uh, we've all seen movies with knights of the realm riding into battle. Every one of them has armor and knows how to use their weapons. Uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. We are the warriors for Jesus, Christian soldiers marching to war. The weapons of our battle are spiritual and we need to know how to use each one. So again, put on the whole armor of God. I talk about this a lot. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12. Uh, training in the use of the weapons begins with studying scripture and learning how godly men relied on God. Uh, David had no fear of the giant Goliath because David understood how to use his weapon. Meanwhile, the army fearfully cowered in the hills. The battle begins by getting rid of the high places of pagan worship which reside in your own heart. These things compromise your walk with God and lure you to let down your guard. Put on God's righteousness and learn how to use his weapons. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, Ephesians 6, 14-18. These are the spiritual weapons we need to put on, and learn to use, and never take off. These were the weapons Paul used to win souls to Christ. He was not a cowardly lion, still there was one more weapon he needed from others, and that was prayer. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that I therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak. Ephesians 6, 19-20 Paul was very bold in his service to Jesus, but the one thing he asked was that fellow Christians pray for him to speak boldly. If he needed a prayer for boldness, so do we and pray for each other so that we can stand together as courageous Christians. And remember, battles are won by trained soldiers. If you ignore the weapons of the spiritual battle and leave them to rust, you'll always be a cowardly lion. So put on the armor of God and don't take it off and you will be a courageous Christian. God bless you all. And that's my message for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please remember again to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate every one of you. Um, if you wish to donate, there are several different ways. It'll be in the description below, be it PayPal, Patreon, um, or even our Christian merchandise store. So I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend coming up. And until uh, next time, God bless you and your families. Thank you.